She do it back. Period. Make a clap for the nigga. Let me hey, stop. Oh <laughs> man. RP man. Y'all already know what time it is. <sighs> hey, it's the five two three eight. I need an ambulance right now. Oh, hold on. Oh, yeah, she decent. That's what I'm saying. So there are different footages out there. Hold on, we're gonna have to pull hold, that back. Hold on, fam. Oh. I'm seeing people in the back. They ain't show the back. I know what I'm saying. I ain't see they show the sides, the front area. Yeah. Let me know if this ain't the wrong scenes. Because I I don't know why it never came out. I ain't mean, see it. Hold on, hold on. Hey, it's the 5238. I need an ambulance right now. Damn, that nigga look right in the camera. Yeah. You saw that? Oh. Damn. Shit. That's another nigga back two, there. Two. two of them. Oh, shit. I saw a white girl standing in front of Yeah, it is based on a true story. Bashar Jackson was born on July 20th, 1999, in Brooklyn, New York, to a Jamaican mother and Panamanian father. His younger pictures even look like Pop Smoke. Mm -hmm. You can't not say that's not yeah, Pop you know Smoke. That's pop, man. Damn, and that's um, Mike D right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Father. He gained a taste for music early on as his mother sang in the choir and his father played conga drums. He stated where he's from, there's only three options of making it out. Become a rapper, a ball player, or a drug dealer. It just so happened he would experience all three of these. For real, in middle school, he, he would be expelled from school for bringing a gun in his backpack, marking the beginning of the rough teenage years, which would inevitably lead him to joining the Crips and Woos. But this doesn't mean he didn't try sports as a way out first, though. When he was 15, he got a scholarship to Rock Top Academy in Philly but was forced to leave his hoop dreams after a doctor's visit showed he had a heart murmur. Facts. In his own words, you like nice things, you gotta do things to get nice things. Facts. He would return to the streets once again where he had his first taste of the finer things in life. By the age of 16, he had made enough money to buy himself a 5 Series BMW. Really? Even though this was years later, he eventually was charged for bringing the weapon to school and placed on two years probation and house arrest. This. Two years later. These motherfuckers. This how I be like, <laughs> duh. Oh shit, it's like, you can nigga, do it for you. It's looking up for you. Like, you imagine you chilling and you already know that's the past. You moving on, trying to get... Oh, hey, uh, come on here. We're taking you in yeah. for... It was like, what? Because they see like you making smarter moves. Yeah, you, you buying uh, BMs. You buying yeah. this. You know, things are looking up. So they're like, oh, let's just go fuck with them. Because yeah, it just look good. Yeah, we got yeah. something on them anyway. So let's... Oh, shit. Yeah, for Why y'all handle it when it first happened? He said two years later. <laughs> it forced him to focus on school. He says this is the only reason why he graduated. One night when he was hanging out with his friends, they all decided to go to a music studio where his acquaintance, Jay Guapo, was recording that Facts. night. Facts. After a few hours of Jay Guapo recording, he Sleep. ended up falling asleep in the studio. Facts. With the studio time already being paid, he decided to hop on the microphone. Having never rapped seriously before, he went to YouTube and pulled up beats. He recorded Money, Power, Respect that night. And the Dang. very next day, everyone on his block was showing love to his song. He knew that. I, like, I want to hear more. With the fact that he just your first song and niggas jamming your yeah. shit, like yo, I fuck with that the song, next man. Day, your shit hot. Niggas like, yo, that, I yeah. fuck with that. Then he might have a chance of making it out of the streets. That's crazy. With his whole hood behind him, he knew he needed to drop some more music. He went back to YouTube wanting more beats from the same person. The mm. producer's name was 808 Mellow, mm. and he was actually a UK drill producer. He continued to take beats from 808 Makes Mellow's sense. YouTube and recorded a few songs, each one getting more popular. He said, let me go back to his page. Yeah. See what else he got. Oh, uh -huh. he's going. smart. Because, you know, the first one, people was fucking it with real heavy. Sound. He said, let me just stick with this beat maker, because his shit really hot. And hey, he real. He said, hey. Me he, mastered it already. And he wasn't even, he was just doing it as fun, like, you know? Yeah, but it's, it's funny how he... He understood the He shit. maneuvered like he's been doing it for years, but he yeah. just already, hold on, something about this vibe. Yeah. But I ain't gonna lie, that 
UK sound with Pop Smoke on yeah. it, it became a a thing. Yeah, when, like, when that you, was a stamp. When you hear Pop Smoke, yeah, you hear UK beat. So like, the drill music. I'm saying that yeah, drill you hear sound. that drill sound. It was fresh. It was fresh. Yeah. We gotta give it to him. Yo, Pop was doing on. He, he knew. He knew his shit. His page, going his page. He decided to go with the name Pop Smoke. His grandma would call him Papa when he was little, but his friends would shorten that to just Pop. And the smoke part was part of his street name. After dropping his single Meet the Woo, it would get a hundred thousand views its first day. This changed everything. First day. His first music day. would catch the attention of a producer named Rico Beats. Rico Beats was good friends with Steven Victor, who had just launched his own label, Victor Victor Worldwide, and was looking for new artists to sign. Steven reached out to Pop Smoke and they decided to meet later that week in his New York office. It was in this office that Pop Smoke not only signed his first deal, but he and Steven would come up with a game plan of how he was going to change the game forever. Damn. While they met, Pop showed Steven he had talent far outside of the drill music he had been putting online. That's big facts. Crazy. He linked, he signed, he signed with the, um, with the guy. Mm -hmm. He signed his first time with the, with the label. And then he definitely showed him a... This is the reason why I signed. Mm -hmm. He kept putting out versatile music. Yeah, it wasn't right. just the drill shit. He showed he could do different uh, shit. I, like, I got a whole lot of shit. I just used that to give him the attention, but also I got some shit. I mean, the thing, he, he really cared about his shit. He was yeah. passionate. Yep. Damn. He could actually sing too, and he was pretty good at it. Damn. Steven told Pop he wanted him to drop a few tapes where he would take over the whole subgenre of Brooklyn drill. And after a few was patient, they would debut his album, showcasing his drill and his more marketable singing side. While this is going on, 808 Mellow is in the UK watching Pop gain a bigger and bigger buzz Damn. off his beats. Just imagine him though as a beat maker, know that your beats. He's using your beats and you're like, damn, this nigga really doing his shit. He's Imagine like, this guy. Yeah, because he's like, oh. Melo probably like, what? No, but he's like. He feel proud. That's what I'm saying. He's he, looking at Pasmo like, damn, yo. You, he, you put it into bringing, work. He's bringing traffic to him too. Facts. But it's like, damn, you you popping you're off, really off make, my. You're, yeah. you're making that shine, but you're making it shine to yeah. show you that, yo, my you shit him right. is hot. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie. That shit is crazy. This is it. It's Stop crazy. paying him. He reached out to Pop Smoke for payments of his now pretty popular songs. But instead of getting money, Pop offered to fly him out to New York and work in house on his upcoming mixtape, Meet the Woo. Oh. Because he was like, hold on, nigga, like, you, you, you blowing up, my friend. When you gonna send some of this money for the songs? Oh. But I'd be like, nigga, let me fly you out. I need you write my right hand man type of shit. Exactly. Let's you know what he did? He made partnership with him. Real shit. Because he brought him to. Um, his studio so they can create more shit. Facts. See, that's original. how you do it. This is how you do it though. Pop said, we're gonna make some original He's a, shit. He was already, he had that business mentality. Dang. Damn, that's crazy. He said, we're gonna make money together, what's up? He said, I got the ticket. Just before dropping his tape, that's he crazy. released his single titled, Welcome to the Party, and his life changed forever. The song went crazy, and that he was, was no hot. longer a struggling Dang. local artist. That shit was hot, the whole state of New York knew who he was. With his name circulating the streets, they knew it was time to drop his debut tape. On July 26, 2019, Meet the Woo Volume 1 officially dropped. Dior would peak at number 22 on the Billboard Hot 100 and would Damn, later go platinum, taking his career crazy. to the next level. Damn. After the release of this tape, Pop began to break into the mainstream, getting co-signs from multiple major artists. With the success of his tape, he was finally starting to sell out bigger shows too. Even Travis Scott invited him to perform on his Astro World Tour. But the music Growing wasn't just fast. popular in the United States. Because 808 Mellow and Pop Smoke's music bridged the gap between the UK drill and New York, even people overseas were catching wind of the music and wanted to hear more after the UK rapper Skepta remixed Welcome to the Party. This was a huge moment because Skepta is known for being one of the biggest drill artists in the UK, and this would bring more attention to Pop's music. Ultimately, the popular DJ Semtex would invite Pop to come perform overseas, despite promoters being skeptical due to him only having a few songs out. It didn't matter though. He was already becoming a superstar, selling out every Fair show. He didn't even have that much um, music out. Oh. But it's it's funny how people wasn't. They, you know, how some people were like, ah, oh, he only have a few. Mm -hmm. They still wanted him to come. Yeah. They still, it's like they believe in his shit. They believe in that shit. Damn, bro. They knew he was hot. Yeah. Damn. In the UK, the UK embraced him like no American rapper before. He was the only one to bring the UK drill sound to the United States Damn. and do it successfully. After returning home and- That's why he fucked with the UK, he always yeah. say that. That was the first was place the he went to. For real. That's because they basically blew up his career. Pop, Pop think different, man. He moved different. 
and he he moves real. What I say, yeah. like he's on point when he picks his little uh, movements. You know what I mean? All every move he made, it seemed like it was winning moves. Mm-hmm. Enjoying Gangsta. the rest of That's his 2019, true. he went on a promo run, hyping up his coming tape, Meet the Woo 2. In January, he attended a Louis Vuitton fashion show in Paris, but on his trip back to New York, the FBI was waiting for him and arrested him. Damn. Almost when a nigga doing, you see that? Every time <laughs> they waited going. after it was in high school. And they came and got Three it. years later. Yeah, and now, now he's damn. Oh, they waited for him to come back. They can't so win. Like, that's crazy. He was held for allegedly stealing a Rolls Royce Wraith valued at $375,000 from a home in Los allegedly. Angeles. Allegedly. He was later released on $250,000 bond, but prohibited from traveling outside the United States without permission. Mm. This led to 50 Cent, who had been watching Pop from a distance, to call a meeting with Pop and Steven. 50 led the meeting by warning him he didn't need to be doing these things anymore. I'm he happy. told him to watch his friends and the company he keeps. Damn. Because they're waiting for so 50 was already mentoring him and saying, hey, I like the way you're moving, but watch certain people around mm -hmm. you. You don't need to be doing certain stuff you did in your past. Mm -hmm. So 50 really was, he was mentoring this kid. 50, 50. I didn't know that 50 was mentoring him and talking to him early in the game. And the thing is, man, 50 from the street streets. So he understand. 50, yeah. 50, could, 50 could tell you, hey. Not everybody yeah. your friend, my friend. Facts. You feel know I me? Mean? Especially I when you're blowing up. Yeah, it's not Don't true. get it twisted. Yeah, so I'm trying to let you pass it on to you. Like, don't... Yeah. Don't be freely with these people because these people, the same one that can set you up. Damn. No real shit. He said some shit. For you to fuck up. They aren't really your friends. Mm. 50 would tell him to follow his guidance. He could get anyone on the phone, he said. He could get him in movies, TV shows. But if you continue down that path, you're going to end up dead or in jail. Wow. This conversation changed the way Pop Smoke looked at everything. Mm. He realized he didn't need to do that street stuff anymore. He could really make a living off music. Damn. On February 7, 2020, he dropped Meet the Woo Volume 2, and it debuted at number 7, giving him his very first top 10 with less than one year in the game. Everything was going unbelievably well for him. Let's him and his entourage booked an expensive Airbnb and a flight to Los Angeles to celebrate. That's the he was time. partying and going on shopping sprees That's and uploaded multiple photos and videos online. One of the videos uploaded accidentally included the address he and his friends were staying at. This would catch the attention of four members from Hoover who would break into the house on February 19th and shoot him multiple times and attempt to rob him. Initially speculation that it was an inside job from one of Pop's friends circulated or that the owner of the Rolls Royce he had stolen was responsible, but these theories were quickly debunked. Friends and neighbors were interviewed, but very little information was given out, quickly leaving his family and fans to believe the killers may actually get away with this. Stephen Victor took to social media to let everyone know that justice will be served. He was right, and in July 2020, the LAPD arrested five suspects for Pop Smoke's murder. The LAPD went public letting everyone know they had to solve this the old-fashioned way, going door-to-door -door asking neighbors of the suspects if they had heard anything. Ultimately, footage from nearby houses and businesses traced the killers back to Hoover Street. It's still believed that the leaked address on social media was the motive behind the robbery gone wrong. Meanwhile, the investigation was going on. 50 Cent had reached out to Steven, telling him he wanted to executive produce Pop Smoke's post almost album. Steven, who had said- Now I feel good about him doing that. I see why. Because mm -hmm. it makes sense for 50 to touch it. Yep. Now everything makes sense now to me. Yep. Because this nigga, he, 50 saw potential in Pop Smoke at an early time. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to mentor he him. He wanted to be, you know, and to do good. Yeah. So I feel right about the album. I'm happy that he, you know. Facts. Yeah. Crazy though. He stated he didn't want to put any of Pop's music out due to being sad just hearing his voice. Yeah. Ended up allowing 50 Cent to help create a project Pop would have been proud of. So his family could benefit from it. Facts. 50 started reaching out to multiple artists and started filling open verses on unfinished songs. Oh, on July 3rd, so that's why it had different features on it. That makes sense. That makes sense. So there were some of them, some of them were, most of them I would say was unfinished. Yeah. Yeah. Because you can hear, remember when A Boogie said, if Pop was alive, it would have been two of us. Yeah, I know. I'm just saying, that's why we keep saying, I'm like, why is so many features on this mm -hmm. shit? So it makes sense. I'm happy with it now. Yeah. After 2020, Pop Smoke's debut album, Shoot for the Stars, Aim for the Moon, was released, and it debuted at number one, with 251,000 copies Damn. being sold its first week. That was with the number one out. album and his killers behind bars possibly facing a death penalty, it felt like a small win in the right direction. But the truth is, none of this needed to happen. Facts. He was only 20 years old, with under a year in mainstream rap. 
and he had already managed to create a whole new sound. It's an underrated. I mean, he didn't even make a year of me doing music. Took him so soon. They didn't give the boy a chance to just Great, be out there. This shit's crazy, bro. Although he's gone, his music will live forever. That's my song right there. Damn. What? Why? You know, I can't do no more Pop Smoke stuff. I get so sad and so mad at the same time. We can't do it no more. It just, it just really bothers my soul. You know? Yeah, it sucks, it sucks. It's like, I wish he could be here to see his greatness. You know, see everything yeah. he worked on. It's like we get to experience it, but he doesn't. Yeah, it sucks. Man. You know what I'm saying? Damn, fam. It's the greatest Pop Smoke for real. Yeah. Uh, tell a fam. Y'all.